We are back in 1982 as we continue our look at the G.I. Joe toy line by Hasbro. Last time, way back in the G.I. Joe flag episode, we established that 1982 was the first series of the three and three quarter inch reboot. The initial 16 straight arm figures were released at this time, and today we're checking out one of the original straight arm figures and the first G.I. Joe I ever got, the communications officer, Breaker, here on Creed's Collection. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Creed's Collection. Today we're taking a look at Breaker from the 1982 toy line G.I. Joe by Hasbro. Breaker, as I stated in the intro, was the first G.I. Joe figure my parents ever bought me, so he has a special place in my Joe collection. Breaker's real name is Alvin R. Kibbe, and he is from Gatlinburg, Tennessee. His primary military specialty is infantry, and his rank in 1982, according to his file card, is E4. Breaker can speak seven languages and is familiar with all NATO and Warsaw Pact communication gear. He is generally the link between the battlefield and headquarters and has the ability to call in airstrikes, provide artillery coordinates, request med evacs, or find extraction sites. And now that we know a bit more about Breaker, let's go ahead and take a closer look. So Breaker's uniform is pretty similar to all the other Joes from the 82 line, as long as you exclude Scarlet, Flash, and Stalker. But he does have a beard in toy form, which is interesting because on the file card he does not, making him one of the only figures to differ from file card photo to toy. Breaker doesn't come with any weapons, but he does have a grenade right here on the front of his chest. So at the very least, you can at least pretend that he can pitch that at the enemy. And only Breaker and the Vamp Driver Clutch have their sleeves rolled up, which gives him a little bit of uniqueness. Down here on his legs, Breaker has silver pouches. All the G.I. Joes had them colored different colors, but I always liked that his were silver. I think that's what sold me on Breaker, is that beyond the green, his color scheme is black and silver, which I really like. All right, now we're gonna take a look at Breaker's accessories, starting with his helmet, which was the standard issue G.I. Joe helmet of 82. There's not much to it, but it's very realistic. It does have the holes here on the side right here, and that allows you to hook on Breaker's included communications headset, which is right here. Now these tabs inside are what allowed it to tab into the helmet. And back here is the cable, which would come off the back of the helmet and plug into the backpack. So basically it would be up like this, and here's what it looks like on the helmet. Now, this is one of my favorite pieces of equipment from old school G.I. Joe. I just love this, even though it's pretty antiquated. Here's Breaker's backpack, which is not really that detailed, but it does have a spot right here where you can plug in the wire from his headset. On the back of the pack, you have the standard peg that plugs into the back of any G.I. Joe. All you have to do is take it and plug it in, just like that. Then you take the wire from his headset and you plug it into the pack. I really like this old school radio communication device, but it was even outdated in the 80s. Breaker! Oh, hey Duke, how you doing? Breaker, this is our new recruit, Dialtone. He's been issued this new field communication pack and will be handling all battlefield communications. It's a real honor to meet the legendary Breaker. Well, okay Duke, if that's what you want, but why can't you just issue me one of those packs? Well, Breaker, the problem is, is that they're pretty expensive. They only issued one, and Dialtone's the lucky guy. I guess that's the way it goes, huh, Breaker? Yeah, I guess that is the way it goes. Dialtone, I'm gonna have Breaker here show you around, but in 20 minutes, we're departing on a mission, so be ready. Okay, yes, sir. 20 minutes later. Where the hell is Dialtone? We gotta go on this mission. Oh, hey Duke, uh, you know, he's kind of tied up. Well, we don't have time to wait, so come on, Breaker, you're in. All right, now it's time to take a look at Breaker's articulation. His knees have a 90 degree bend, ball joint hips, and he also has a rubber band waist with some flexibility there. The shoulders are able to go up and out, but since he's a series one, his arms here, they cannot do the swivel arm battle grip at all. Breaker's head can turn left and right, and that is it. That covers all of the articulation for Breaker. On the bottom of the figure, you can see the copyright date, 
1982 Hasbro made in Hong Kong. Here's a look at Breaker's file card. If you'd like to read it, pause now. And now for our He-Man size comparison. Even though the 3 and 3 quarter inch G.I. Joes are very small compared to He-Man, as we've established many times, they are still the toys I crossed over the most. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my toy retrospective for Breaker from the 1982 toy line G.I. Joe by Hasbro. Breaker is an extremely important piece in my collection because he helped solidify my love of action figures and collecting in general. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you have any thoughts, please leave a comment. I love reading and responding to them. And while you're at it, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it and it would help my channel grow. I do a retrospective on a toy from my vintage collection every Wednesday. So hope to see you next week and every week after here on Creed's Collection.